On a little by road, out beyond Finkless, he was found. Oh. Hasn't that father of yours come in yet? No, mother. Oh, he'll come in when he likes. Strutting about the town like a peacock with jocks, or I suppose. I hear all about Mrs. Tancred's son is in this morning's paper. The full details are in it this morning. Seven wounds he had. One entering the neck with an exit wound beneath the left shoulder blade. Oh. Another across the left breast, penetrating the heart. Oh, quit that reading, for God's sake. Are you losing all your feelings? <laughs> It'll soon be that none of you'll read that. And it's not a bit butcher. Johnny's getting very sensitive all of a sudden. I'll read it myself, Mary, by and by when I come home. Everybody's saying that he was a die hard. Thanks be to God that Johnny had nothing to do with him this long time. Right, there's your dad's sausages. But if he doesn't come in soon for his breakfast, he may go without any. I'll not wait much longer for him. Can't you let him get it himself when he comes in? Yes. And let him bring in Joxer Daly along with him. Aye, that's what he'd like. That's what he's waiting for. Till he thinks I'm gone to work and then sail in with the bowl Joxer to burn all the coal and drink all the tea in the place to show them what a good Samaritan he is. But I'll stop here till he comes in if I have to wait till tomorrow morning. Mother? Yes? Bring us in a drink of water. Oh. Bring in that fella, drink of water, for God's sake, Mary. Isn't he big and able enough to come out and get it himself? If you weren't well yourself, you'd like somebody to bring you in a drink of water. Oh, isn't it terrible to have to be waiting this way? You'd think that husband of mine was bringing 20 pounds a week into the house the way he's going on. He wore out the health insurance long ago. He's after wearing out the unemployment dole, and now he's trying to wear out me. And constantly singing, no less. And he ought to be always on his knees, offering up an ovina for a job. I don't like this ribbon, ma. I think I'll wear the green. Looks better than the blue. Ah, wear whatever ribbon you like, girl, only don't be bothering me. I don't know what a girl on strike wants to be wearing a ribbon round her head for, or silk stockings on her legs either. It's wearing them things that makes the employers think they're giving you too much money. The hour is past now when we'll ask the employer's permission to wear what we like. I don't know why you wanted to walk out for Jenny Claffy. Up to this, you never had a good word for her. What's the use of belonging to a trades union if you won't stand up for your principles? Mm. Why did they sack her? It was a clear case of victimisation. We couldn't let her walk the streets, could we? Oh, no, of course you couldn't. News wanted to keep her company. One victim wasn't enough. When the employer sacrificed one victim, the trade union go one better by sacrificing a hundred. It doesn't matter what you say, Ma. A principle's a principle. Yes, and when I go into Earl Murphy's tomorrow and he gets to know that instead of paying all, I'm going to borrow more, what'll he say when I tell him a principle's a principle? What'll we do if he refuses us to give us any more on tip? He daren't refuse. If he does, can't you tell him he'll be paid? Oh, it looks like he never will be. Sorry. Johnny, what is it now? What ails you, love? I was lying down. I thought you were gone. Old Simon Mackey is tramping about upstairs like oh. a horse over me head and I can't sleep with him. They're like thunderclaps in me brain. For the course of jail. Oh, God, forgive me for going to course. There, now, go back and lie down again and I'll bring you in a nice cup of tea. Oh, tea, tea, tea. You're always thinking of tea. If a man was dying, you'd try to make him swallow a cup of tea. I don't know what's going to be done with them. The bullet he got on the hip in the East Horizon was bad enough. But the bomb that shot at his arm in the War of Independence put the finishing touches on him. And then he goes again to free state. God knows I went down on me bended knees to him not to make a fool of himself. He stuck to his principles, and no matter how you may argue, Ma, a principle's a principle. Oh. Is Mary going to stay here? No, I'm not going to stay here. You can't expect me to be always at your beck and call, can you? I won't stop here for myself. I'm a tiny nicely handicapped with the holiest. I don't know what any of you would do without your ma. Johnny, 
Your father will be here in a minute, and if you want anything, he'll get it for you. I hate asking him for anything. He hates to be asked to stir. Is the light lighting before the picture of the Virgin? Yes, yes. The one inside to St. Anthony isn't enough, but he must have another one to the Virgin in here. Sounds like Jerry Devine. I know, Ma. Oh. Mrs. Boyle, Mrs. Boyle. Jerry. Where's the captain, Mrs. Boyle? Where's the captain? Oh, you may well ask a body that. He's wherever Jocks or Daly is, drinking in some snug or another. Father Farrell is just after stopping to tell me to run up and get him to go to the new job that's oh. going on in Rathmines. <gasps> His cousin is foreman of the job. And Father Farrell would speak to him about poor Johnny and his father being idle so long. And the foreman told Father Farrell to send the captain up and he'd give him a start. Oh, thanks be to God. I wonder where I'd find him. You'd find him either in Ryan's or Foley's. I run run to Ryan's. I know it's a great house of joxers. Oh, there now. He'll miss that job or I'll know for what. If he gets wind of it, he'll not come back till evening so that it'll be too late. There'll never be any good got out of him, so long as he goes with that shoulder shrug and jocks her. I kill him myself working, and he's strutting about from morning till night like a peacock. Oh, here he is now. Sweet spirit, hear his prayer. Ah, then I'll take me solemn Affy Davy. It's not for a job he's praying. Just wait till I hide myself. Sub, yes, it's a sub. Come on, on in, Joxer. She's gone out long ago, man. If there's nothing else to be got, we'll furnish you with a cup of tea anyway. It's the only bit of getting comfort when she's away. It isn't you know she'll be our pet name at all, but Deirdre the sorrows, for she's always gruesome. It's a terrible thing to be tied to a woman that's always grousing. I don't know how you stick it. It'll put years on me. It's a good job she doesn't have to be so often away, for when the cat's away, the mice can play. Pull over to the fire, Joxer, and we'll have a cup of tea in a minute. Ah, a cup of tea is a darling thing, a darling thing. The cup that's here, what? but the holy goddess. Oh, oh gone out long ago, is it? Pull over to the fire, Jocks are daily, and we'll have a cup of tea in a minute. Are you sure now? You wouldn't like an egg? No, I can't stop, Mrs. Boyle. I'm in a desperate hurry, a desperate hurry. Pull over to the fire, Jocks are daily. People is always far more comfortable here than they are in their own place. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Jocks are... Yes? You know the foreman of that job that's going on down in Colester, don't you, Jocks are? A foreman? Calesta. He's a buddy of yours, isn't he? Oh, the foreman in Calesta. Oh, yes, yes, he's an old buddy of mine. Oh, he's a darling man, a darling man. Oh, then it's a sure thing. It's a pity we didn't go down at breakfast first thing this morning. We might have been walking now, but we didn't know it then. Oh, it's better late than never. It's nearly time we got a start, anyhow. <sighs> I'm fed up knocking around doing nothing. He promised you, gave you the straight tip. Oh, oh yes, yes, is he? Come down at the blow of dinner, says he, and I'll start you and any friend you like to bring with you. I says, oh, you're a darling man, a darling man. Well, it couldn't have come at a better time. We're a long time waiting for Indeed us. we were. But it's a long lane that has no turning. Oh, no turning. The blow for dinner is at one. Wait till I see what time it is. Mind how you go on fiddling with that clock. You know the least thing sets it astray. The job couldn't have come at a better time. I'm feeling in great fettle, Jock, sir. I hardly believe I ever had a pain in me legs. And last week I was nearly crippled with them. Well, that's better and better. Uh, God never shut one door, but he opened another. It's only 11 o'clock. We've lashings the time. I'll slip on me old moleskins after breakfast and we can saunter down at our days. I think, uh, Jocks are, we'd better uh, bring our shovels. Oh, oh, yes, Captain, yes. 
Now, it, it's better to go fully prepared and ready for all eventualities. You bring your long tail shovel, I'll bring me navvy. We might want them, and then again, we might. <laughs> For one of a nail, the shoe was lost. For one of a shoe, the horse was lost. For one of a horse, the man was lost. Uh, that's a darling proverb. A uh, darling proverb. You be lost. Uh, if you don't get the hell out of here, go on, get out there. Oh, we won't be long pulling ourselves together again when I'm working for a few weeks. But the foreman on the job is an old buddy of Joxers. I have an idea that I know him myself. <laughs> There's a button on the back of me moleskin trousers. If you leave out a needle and thread, I'll sew it on myself. But thanks be to God, the pans of me legs is gone. <coughs> Look here, Mr. Jackie boy. <clears throat> Them yarns won't go down with you now. I know you and Jocks are daily of an old date, and if you think you're able to come it over me with them fairy tales, you're in the wrong shop. <coughs> oh, butty of Joxers. Oh, you'll do a lot of good as long as you continue to be a butty of Joxers. <coughs> <laughs> Shovel. <laughs> ah, then, me boy, oh, you do far more work with a knife and fork than ever you do with a shovel. If there was air a genuine job going, you'd be the other way about. Not able to lift your arms with the pigs in your legs. Your poor wife, slaving to keep the bit in your mouth, oh. and you gallivanting about all the day like a peacock. It'll be better for a man to be dead. Better for a man to be dead. Everybody calling you captain, and you only once on the water <clears throat> in an old coal boat from here to Liverpool, when anybody to listen or look at you I take you for a second Christo for Columbus. Are you ever going to give it a rest? Ah, oh, you're never tired of looking for a rest. Do you want to drive me out of the house? It'd be easier to drive you out of the house than to drive you into a job. Here, sit down and take your breakfast. It may be the last you'll get. For I don't know where the next is going to come from. If I get this job, we'll be all right. Did you see Jerry Devine? No, I didn't see him. No, but you seen Jock, sir. Well, Jerry was here looking for you. Well, let him look. Oh, indeed, he may well look. For it'd be hard for him to see you and you stuck in Ryan's snug. I wasn't in Ryan's snug. I don't go into Ryan's. Oh, is there a mad dog there? Well, if you weren't in Ryan's, you were in Foley's. I'm telling you, for the last three weeks, I haven't tasted a drop of intoxicating liquor. <laughs> I wasn't in either one snook or the other. I could swear that on a prayer book. I'm as innocent as the child unborn. Well, if you'd been in for your breakfast, you'd have seen him. What does he want me for? Oh, he'll be back any minute, and then you'll soon know. Well, I'll drop out and see if I can see him. You'll sit down and take your breakfast. <clears throat> and let me go to me work, for I'm an hour late already waiting for you. Well, you need the waited, for I'll take no breakfast. I'm a little spirit left to me still. Are you going to have your breakfast? Yes or no? I'll have no breakfast. You can keep your breakfast. I'll knock out a bit somewhere. Never fear. Nobody's going to coax you. Don't think that. I have a little spirit left in me still. Mrs. Boyd? Oh, that'll be Jerry now. Come in, Jerry. Oh, here you are at last, Captain Boyd. I've been searching for you everywhere. The foreman in Foley's told me you hadn't left the snug with Joxer ten minutes before I went in. Oh, and he's swearing on the holy prayer book that he wasn't in no snug. What business is it of yours whether I was in a snug or no, Jerry Devine? What do you want to be galloping about after me for? Is a man not to be allowed to leave his house for a minute without having a pack of spies, pimps and informers cantering at his heels? Oh, you're taking a wrong view of it, Mr. Boy. I simply was anxious to do you a good turn. I have a message for you from Father Farrell. He says that if you go to the job that's on in Rath Mines and ask for Foreman Manigan, you'll get a start. Well, that's all right. But I don't want the motions of me body to be watched the way an astronomer would watch a star. If you're following me daughter Mary yourself, you've no prerogative to be following me. Oh, oh. 
Oh, I'm after getting a terrible twinge in me right leg. Oh, it won't be very long now till it travels into his left one. What's miraculous is whenever he sends a job in front of him, his legs begin to fail him. Then, me buckle, if you lose this chance, you may go and forage for yourself. This job will last for some time too, Captain. And as soon as the foundations are in, it'll be cushy enough. Won't it be a climbing job? How do you expect me to be able to go up a ladder with these legs? And uh, if I get up myself, how am I going to get down again? Just one of the labourers to carry you down in a hod. You can't climb a ladder, but you can skip like a goat into a snow. I wouldn't let myself be let down that easy, Mr Boyle. A little exercise now might do you all the good in the world. Oh, it's a doctor you should have been, Divine. Maybe you know more about the pains in me legs than myself that has them. Oh, I know nothing about the pains in your legs. I brought the message that Father Farrell gave me, and that's all I can do. Here, sit down and take your breakfast and go and get ready. And don't be acting as if you couldn't pull a wing out of a dead bee. I want no breakfast. I tell you, it'll choke me after all that's been said. I have a little spirit left in me still. Well, let's see your spirit then. And go in at once and put on your mole skin trousers. Oh, it would be better for a man to be dead. Oh, oh, oh there's another twinge oh. in the other leg. Nobody but myself knows the suffering I've gone through with the pants and his legs. I can't find me hat, man. Mary, I'll have to push off now. I'm terrible late already. But I was determined to stay and hunt that juxer this time. Have you gone out, Mary? It looks like it when I'm putting on my hat, doesn't it? The bitter word again, Mary. You won't allow me to be friendly with you. If I try, you deliberately misunderstand it. I didn't always misunderstand it. You were often delighted to have the arms of Jerry around you. If you go on talking like this, Jerry Devine, you'll make me hate you. Well, let it be either a wedding or a wake. Listen, Mary. I'm standing for the secretaryship of our union. There's only one opposing me. I'm popular with all the men and a good speaker. All are saying that I'll get elected. Well? The job's worth £350 a year, Mary. You and I could live nice and cosily on that. It would lift you out of this place I haven't time to listen to you now. I have to go. Mary, what's come over you with me for the last few weeks? You hardly speak to me and then only a word with a face of bitterness on it. Have you forgotten, Mary, all the happy evenings that were as sweet as the scented hawthorn that sheltered the sides of the road as we sauntered through the country? That's all over now. When you get your new job, Jerry, you won't be long finding a girl far better than I am for your sweetheart. Never. Never, Mary. No matter what happens, you'll always be the same to me. Get out of me way, Jerry. I want to go. I'll go a bit of the way with you. You needn't, thanks. I want to be by myself. You're going to meet another fella. You've clicked with someone else, me lady. It's no concern of yours, Jerry Devine. Let me go. I saw you coming over the cornflower dance class and you hanging on his arm. A tin, lanky strip of a Mickey Dazzler with a walking stick and gloves. What are you doing there? Pulling a bed over tin. You're hurting me arm. Let me go or I'll scream and then you'll have the old fella out on top of us. Don't be so hard on a fella, Mary. Don't be so hard. What's the meaning of all this hillabaloo? Let me go. Let me go. Do you hear me? What's all this hillabaloo about? Will you not give us one kind word? One kind word, Mary. Do you hear me talking to you? What's all this hillabaloo for? Let me kiss your hand, your little tiny white hand. Stop there. Licky, tiny white hand. You take a leave of your senses, man. This is a nice goings on in front of our father. Ah, dry up for God's sake. Mary! Mary! Chisels. <laughs> Don't care a damn now about the parents. They're bringing their father's grey hairs down with sorrow to the grave and laughing at us. Laughing at us. Huh. I suppose it's just the same everywhere. The whole world's in a state of chassis. Breakfast. Uh, well, they can keep their breakfast for me. 
Not if they went down on their bended knees would I take it. And I'll show them with a little spirit left in me still. Sausage. Ah, let our keep our sausage. The tea is wet, right enough. Suppose I could have just a little taste of the sausage. Uh-uh. When the robin's nest again. Uh-uh. And the flowers are in bloom. When the springtime, a sunny smile, seems to banish all the sour bloom. Let me bunny. You don't happen to want a sewing machine. No, I don't want to air the sewing machine. <sighs> yeah, when the robin's nest again. Well, no flower, no bell. That's the terrible tatterara. That's a stranger. That's nobody belonging to the house. Oh, oh, it's you. Did you hear them tatterara's cotton? Well, Jock, sir, I'm not deaf. Who's that at the door? Who's that at the door? Who gave that knock? Do you hear me? Are you deaf or drunk or what? How the hell do I know who it is? And jocks are stick our head out the window and see. <clears throat> Maybe get a bullet in the kisser. <laughs> you know, none of them tricks for jocks are. It's better to be a coward than a corpse. Right, I will look myself then, so. It's a fella in a trench coat. Holy Mary, Mother of God, I... He's going away. He must have got tired knocking. <clears throat> trench coat, trench coat. <laughs> oh, that boy's nerves are shot. Will, will you sit down and have a cup of tea, Jocksar? Sure. I'm afraid your missus would pop in on us again before we know where we are. Something's telling me to go at once. Don't be a superstitious man. We're Dublin men and not bios that's only after coming up from the bog of Allen. Though, if she did come in right enough, We'd be caught like rats in a trap. Yeah, and y- you know the sort she is. She wouldn't listen to reason. Mm. And once bitten, twice shy. But if the worst came to the worst, you could dart out the back window, Joxer. It's only a drop of a few feet to the roof of the return room. And the first minute she goes into the other room, I'll give you the bend, and you can slip back in and away. Yeah, well... Oh, yeah, well, I won't stop very long, anyhow. <laughs> Who's is the book? Ah, it's one of Mary's. She's always reading lately, nothing but trash, too. There was one I was looking at the other day. Three stories. The Doll's House, Ghosts, and The Wild Duck. Books only fit for children. <laughs> Did you ever read Elizabeth or The Exile of <coughs> Siberia? <laughs> Ah, it's a darling story, a darling story. You eat your sausage and never mind the exile of Siberia. What sausage? So haven't you only poured me gravy? Mm. What are you wearing your moleskin trousers for? Well, we have to go to a job, Joxer. Oh. Just after you'd gone, Divine came running in to tell us the father Farrell said if I went down to the job that's going on in Rat Mines. I'd get a start. Be the holy, that's good news. Oh, that was a good news. I wonder if you were in my condition, would you call it good news? Well, I thought You that... thought. You think you sudden sometimes, jocks are. Do you know, I'm hardly able to crawl with the pains in me legs. Oh, yes, I forgot about the pains in your legs. I know you can do nothing when they're at you. You forgot. I don't think any of you has realised the state I'm in with the pain in me legs. What would happen if I had to carry a bag of cement? Ah, any man having to like at them pains would be down and out, down and out. I wouldn't mind if he had said it to myself, but on all, oh no, he rushes in and shouts it out in front of Juno. And you know what Juno is, Jocks, huh? Oh, yeah. We all know Divine knows a little more than the rest of us. But he doesn't act as if he did. Mm. He's a good boy, sober, able to talk and all that, but still... Oh, I able to argify, but still... If he's running after me to yourself, he's not going to be running after me. Captain Boyle's able to take care of himself. After all, I'm not getting brought up on viral. <laughs> 
I never heard him using a curse. What? I don't believe he was ever drunk in his life. <laughs> sure, he's not like a Christian at all. You're out there taking the words out of me mouth. After all, a Christian's natural, but he's unnatural. His old fellow was just the same, a Wicklow man. <laughs> a Wicklow man? <laughs> sure, that explains the whole thing. Uh-huh. I've met many a wickler man in my time, but I, I never met one that was any good. Father Farrell, says he, sent me down to tell you. Father Farrell, do you know, Jock, sir, I never like to be beholden to any of the clergy. It's dangerous, right enough. If they do anything for you, they want you to be living in the chapel. I want to tell you something, Jock, sir, that I wouldn't tell to anybody else. The clergy always had too much power over the people in this unfortunate country. You could sing that if you had an air to it. Didn't they prevent the people in 47 from seizing the corn and they starving? Mm-hmm. Didn't they down Parnell? Yeah. Didn't they say that hell wasn't hot enough nor eternity long enough to punish the Fenians? Yeah. We don't forget them yeah, things. Man. We don't forget, Juxar. If they've taken everything from us, Jocks, they've left us our memory. Uh, From memories, the only friend the grave can call its own. The grave can call its own. Father Farrell's beginning to take a great interest in me, Captain Boyle, because of what Johnny did for his country, says he to me one day. It's a curious way to reward Johnny be making his poor old father walk. <laughs> but that's what the clergy want, Jocks are. Walk, walk, walk for me and you. Better fettle for them when they come hopping around for their Jews. Yeah. Job. Well... Let him give his job to one of his hymn singing, prayer spouting, craw thumping confraternity men. <laughs> oh. Ah, God be with the young days, Captain, when you were stepping the deck of a manly ship, oh. with the wind blowing a hurricane through the masts, <laughs> and the only sound you'd hear was, Port your helm, and the only answer, Port that is so. Damn was days, Jocks. Damn was days. Yeah. Nothing was too hot or too heavy for me, Dan. Sailing <laughs> from the Gulf of Mexico to the Antarctic Ocean. <laughs> I seen things. Oh, I seen things, Jocks, that no mortal man should speak about that knows his catechism. <laughs> often and often, when I was fixed to the wheel with a man and spike and the wind blowing fierce, and the waves lashing and lashing till you you think every minute was going to be your last and it blowed and blowed uh, it, no, the blue is the right word jocks are but blowed is what the sailors use uh, it's a darling word it's a darling word and as it blowed and blowed I often looked up at the sky and asked myself the question what is the stars what is is the stars? Ah, uh, that's the question. That's the question. What is the stars? And then I'd have another look and I'd ask myself, What is the moon? Ah, uh, that's the question. What is the moon? What is the moon? That's you, no? You know by our step. Quick, out the window, man. Out the window. Uh, Easy now, steady. Oh. Do you want any blocks? No, we don't want any blocks. Doctor, it wasn't poor. Oh. Cold, man. Oh. <coughs> oh. You all right? Oh, look. Just after putting the heart across me. Sit down. I could have sworn it was June. <sighs> Oh, I'd better be going, Captain. You couldn't tell the minute you know it'd hop in on us. I'll let her hop in. We may as well have it out first as last. 
I've made up my mind. I'm not going to do only what she damn well likes. You know, that, them sentiments does you credit, Captain. I don't like to say anything as between man and wife, but I say as a buzzy, as a buzzy, Captain, that you've stuck it too long. And it's about time you showed a little spunk. How can a man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods? Well, she has her rights. Uh, There's no denying it. Uh, but haven't I uh, me rights, too? Of course you have. The sacred rights of man. Today, Joxer, there's going to be issued a proclamation be me. Establishing an independent republic. <laughs> and Juno will have to take an oath of allegiance. <laughs> be fear him, Captain. Be fear him. The first few minutes will be the worst. <laughs> if you gently touch a nettle, it'll sting you for your pains. Grasp it like a lad of metal. And soft as silk remains. Can't stop, Mrs. Magic. Holy God, God here she is. Oh, oh, the breakfast! Oh, I knew that fella would stop till she was in on top of us. You are me, darling, Jenny. Oh, you're in! <coughs> you must have been only after coming in. No, I never went out. It's curious then you never heard the knocking. Knocking? Of course I heard the knocking. And why didn't you open the door then? Oh, I suppose you were busy with Joxer and that you hadn't time. Well, I haven't seen Joxer since I've seen him before. Joxer, what a bring Joxer here. Oh, do you mean to tell me that the pair of yous wasn't colloguing together here when me back was torn? What do we be colloguing about? I have something else to think of besides colloguing with Joxer. <laughs> I can swear on all the holy prayers. That boots. you weren't in no snug. Ah. Go in at once now and take off that moleskin trousers of yours and put on a collar and tie to smarten yourself up a bit. There's a visitor coming with Mary in a minute and he has great news for you. A job, I suppose. Let us get one first before we start looking for another. Oh, that's the thing that's able to put the wind off you. Well, it's no job. But news that'll give you the chance of your life. Oh, what's all the mystery about? Go in and take off the moleskin trousers when you're told. Oh, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, God bless us. Look at the way everything's thrown about. Oh, Joxer was here. Joxer was here. Come on in, Charlie. Oh, come in, Mr. Bentham. Sit down, Mr. Bentham. Oh, in this chair. It's more comfortable than that, Mr. Bentham. Himself will be here in a minute. He's just taken off his trousers. Mother! Please don't put yourself to any trouble, Mrs. Boyle. I'm quite all right here. Thank you. And to think of you knowing Mary, and she knowing the news you had for us <laughs> and wouldn't let on. But it's all the more welcomer now, for we were on our last lap. Stop it, sir! What are you kicking up all the racket for? Well, take it off, me moleskin trousers. <coughs> Without letting the whole house know you're taking off your trousers. Ma. What do you want putting them on and taking them off again? Will you let me alone? Will you let me alone? Am I ever going to be done trying to please the whole lot of You must excuse the state of the place, Mr. Bentham. The minute I turn me back, that man of mine always makes a litter of the place. A litter of the place. Don't worry, Mrs. Boyle. It's all right, I assure you. Where's me braces? <gasps> <coughs> Where in the name of God did I leave me braces? Ah, there's me collar and tie. Hey, do you see where I put me braces? Uh, well, will you come in here and take that away out of this, or it'll drive me mad. Oh, dear, dear, dear. That man will be looking for something on the day of judgment. And uh, look at your braces, man, hanging round your neck. Oh, holy God. Johnny, Johnny, come out here for a minute. I'll leave Johnny alone and don't be annoying him. Come on, Johnny, till I introduce you to Mr. Bentham. My son, Mr. Bentham, he's after going through the mill. He was only a chiseler of a Boy Scout in Easter week when he got hit in the hip. And then his arm was blew off in the fight in O'Connell Street. Oh, 
Here he is, Mr. Bentham. Mr. Bentham? Johnny, none can deny he done his bit for Ireland. If that's going to do him any good. We'll do it again, Ma. We'll do it again. For a principle's a principle. Ah, oh, you lost your best principle, me boy, when you lost your arm. Them's the only sort of principle that's any good to a working man. Ireland only half free will never be at peace while she has a son left to pull a trigger. To be sure, to be sure. No bread's a lot better than half a loaf. <laughs> will you hurry up in there? Ah, oh, this is my husband, Mr. Boyle. Mr. Bentham. Ah, very glad to know you, Mr. Boyle. How are you? Uh, I'm not too well at all. Uh, I suffer terrible with pains in my legs. Do you know there can tell you what you I go? You won't have many pains in your legs when you hear what Mr. Bentham has to tell you. Do you know? What an interesting name. It reminds one of Homer's glorious story of ancient gods and heroes. Uh, yes, oh. uh, doesn't it? Uh, you see, Juno was born and christened in June. I met her in June. We were married in June. And Johnny here was born in June. So one day I says to her, you should have been called Juno. <laughs> and the name stuck to her ever since. Here we can talk at them things again. Let Mr. Penton say what he has to say now. Well, Mr. Boyle, I suppose you remember a Mr. Ellison of Santry. He's a relative of yours, I think. Is it that prognosticator and procrastinator? Of course I remember them. Well, he's dead, Mr. Boyle. Sarah, many will go into mourning for him. Wait till you hear what Mr. Bentham has to say, and then maybe you'll change your opinion. A week before he died, he sent for me to write his will for him. He told me that there were only two that he wished to leave his property to. His second cousin, Michael Finnegan of Santry, and John Boyle, his first cousin of Dublin. Me! It's it me! Me! You! Mr. Boyle, I read a copy of the will that I have here with me, which has been duly filed in the court of probate. <laughs> 6th of February, 1922. This is the last will and testament of William Ellison of Santry in the county of Dublin. I hereby order and wish my property to be sold and divided as follows. £20 to the St. Vincent de Paul Society, £60 for masses for the repose of my soul, five shillings for each mass, the rest of my property to be divided between my first and second cousins. <laughs> I hereby appoint Timothy Buckley of Santry and Hugh Brealey of Kulock to be my executors. Signed, William Ellison, Hugh Brearley, Timothy Buckley, Charles Bentham, National Teacher. Uh, and how much will be coming out of it, Mr. Bentham? The executors told me that half of the property would be anything between 1500 and £2,000. Fortune, oh, Father, oh, a oh. fortune. We'll be able to get out of this place now and go somewhere we're not known. <laughs> you won't have to trouble about a job for a while, Jack. <laughs> oh, I'll never doubt the goodness of God again. I congratulate you, Mr. Boyle. Ah, uh, no, Mr. Bentham, you'll have to have a wet. A wet? <laughs> a wet! A jar! A bowel! Jack, you're speaking to Mr. Bentham and not the jock, sir. Well, do you know, Mary, Johnny, we'll have to go into morning at once. I never expected that poor Bill... A die so sudden. Well, we all have to die someday. You, Juno, today. And me, maybe, tomorrow. It's sad, but it can't be helped. Requiem Scott and Pache. Or using our old tongue like St. Patrick or St. Bridges. Gossera Gia Era. Oh, Father, that's not rest in peace. That's God save Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> all the same, isn't it a prayer? Juno? I'm done with Joxer. He's nothing but a prognosticator on a... Oh, you're done with Joxer, are you? Uh, yeah, maybe you thought I'd stop on the roof all night for you. His Joxer out in the roof with the wind blowing through him was nothing to you and your friend with the collar and tie. What in the name of God brought you out on the roof? What were you doing there? What was I doing? I was dreaming I was standing on the bridge of a ship. And she sailed in the Antarctic Ocean and it plowed and it plowed. And I look up at the sky and say, what is the stars? What is the stars? Here, get out of this, Dr. Daly. I was always thinking you had a slate loose. I have to laugh every time I look at a deep sea sailor and a row on a river and make him seasick. Get out, out of this before I take the law into my own hands. Oh, say are he war, but not good boy. Looking for work? I'm praying to God he won't get it. Get out, Helen. Get out. Oh, 
I'm tired telling you what Joxa was. Maybe now you see for yourself the kind he is. He'll never blow the froth off a point of mine again. That's a sure thing, Johnny, Mary. You're to keep yourselves to yourselves for the future. Juno, I'm done with Joxer. I'm a new man from this house. Oh, me darling Juno, <laughs> I will be true <laughs> to thee. Stop it, Jack. Me, oh, me darling Juno, you're, you're me, all the Mr. world Benton. to me. <laughs> you are me darling Juno, I will be true to thee. Me, oh, me darling Juno, you're all the world to me. Jock, sir, me son, come along. Can you be yourself? Oh, come on, come on, that doesn't matter. I'm master now, and I'm going to remain master. How do you feel now, as a man of money? Uh, Jock, sir, uh, hand me over that attacky case there. Ever since the will was passed, I've run hundreds of documents through me hands. I tell you, you have to keep your wits about you. Well, I, I, I won't disturb you. I, I'll drop back, you know, when you're... Uh, oh, no, 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 uh, it's, it's all right, uh, Doctor. This is the last one that has to be signed today. Now, Doctor, if you want to see me, I'm at your service. What can I do for you, me man? Uh, I just dropped down with the three pounds, five shillings that Mrs. Madigan riz on the blankets and table for you. And she says you to be in no hurry paying it back. Well, she won't be long without us. Uh, I expect the first cheque for a couple of hundred any day. Uh, there's the five bob for yourself. No, no, Go no. on, take it, nice. man. It'll not be the last you'll get from the captain. <laughs> now and again we have our dipper, but we're there together all the time. <laughs> me for you and you for me, like the two musketeers. A bad fellow stopped me today and told me how glad he was I fell in for the money. So he'll be stopping you often enough now. I suppose it was Mr. Boyle with him. He shook me by the hand. Oh, I met with Nabbat Handley and he shook me by the hand. Uh, you're seldom a stray, Oxford, but you're wrong shipped this time. What you're saying of Father Farrell is very near to blasphemy. I don't like anyone talking disrespectful of Father Farrell. Oh, no, 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 you're taking me up wrong, Captain. Sure, I, I wouldn't let a word be said against Father Farrell, the heart of the rebel. That's what he is. I always said he was a darling man, a darling man. Now, coming up the stairs, who did I meet but that bummer, new Nugent? Oh, I seen you talking to Father Farrell, says he, yeah. with a grin on him. Yeah. He'll be following you, says he, like a guardian angel from this yeah. out all the time with the old grin on him, Jack, yeah, yeah. I never seen him yet, but he had that old grin in him. Mr. Nugent, says I, Father Farrell is a man of the people, and as far as I know the history of me country... The priests was always in the van of the fight for Ireland's freedom. Who was it led the van? Sogger to ruin. Since the fight force began, Sogger to ruin. Who are you telling? Says he. Didn't they let down the Fenians yeah. and didn't they do him Parnell? Parnell? And now... You ought to be ashamed of yourself, says I, interrupting yeah. him. Not to know the history of your country. <laughs> and I left him gawking where he was. <laughs> <laughs> where ignorance is bliss. Tis folly to be wise. <laughs> I wonder did he ever read the story of Ireland? B.J. Al Sullivan, don't you know? He didn't. Oh, that's a darling book. It's a darling book. No, you'd uh, better be going now, Jock, sir. His Majesty Bentham will be here any minute now. But the way things is looking, it'll be a match between him and Mary. She's thrown over Jerry altogether. Well, I hope it will, for he's a darling man. Well, I'm glad you think so. I don't. What's darling about him? 
Well, I only seen him the twice. If you want to know me, come and live with me. He's too dignified for me. To hear him talk, you'd think he knew as much as Boney's oraculum. He's given up his job as teacher and is going to become a solicitor in Dublin. He's been studying law. I suppose he thinks I'll set him up, but he's wrong shipped. And the other fella, Jerry's is bad. The two of them will give you a pain in your face listening to them. Jerry believing in nothing, and Bentham believing in everything. One that says all is God and no man, and the other says all is man and no <laughs> God. <laughs> well, I'll be off now. Oh, don't forget to drop down after a while. We'll have a quiet jar and a song or two. Oh, never fear. <laughs> uh, tell Mrs. Madigan that I hope we'll have the pleasure of her organisation. At our little entertainment. All right, oh, yeah. we come down together. Go on yourself. You go. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Where's Ma? Huh? Oh, that'll be her now. Nearly can't with the weight. Carrying that from Henry Street was no joke. Oh, that's a grand-looking instrument. How much was it? A pound down and five to be paid at two shillings a week. Oh, that's reasonable enough. Oh, I'm afraid we're running into too much debt. First the furniture and now this. The whole lot won't be much out of two thousand pounds. I don't know what you wanted a gramophone for. I know Charlie hates them. He says they're destructive of real music. Destructive of music? That fella give you a pain in your face. All a gramophone wants is to be properly played. Its true wonder is only felt when everything's quiet. What a gramophone wants is dead silence. But, Father, Jerry says the same. After all, you can only appreciate music when your ear is properly trained. That's another fella give you a pain in your face. Properly trained? I suppose you couldn't appreciate football unless your foot was properly trained. Uh, go in out of that and dress, Mary, or Charlie will be in on you. And Tina or nothing will be ready. Johnny, Johnny, would you ever get the horn and the new gramophone? Oh, it isn't gramophones I'm thinking of. Uh, what is it you're thinking of, Alana? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Sure, you must be thinking of something, Johnny. It's yourself that has yourself the way you are. Sleeping one night in me sister's and then the next in your father's brother's. You'll get no rest going on that way. I can rest nowhere. Nowhere, nowhere. Sure you're not trying to rest anywhere. Uh, let me alone. Let me alone. Let me alone, for God's sake. Here he is. Here's Mr. Bentham. We'll hand the tea round and not be clustered round the table as if we never seen nothing. Well, if there's room for him, it's a pity there's not a brass band to play him in. Mrs. Boyle. Uh, uh. Mr. Boyle. Ah. Now... Give your hat and stick to Jack there. Sit down, Mr. Bentham. No, no, not there. In the easy chair by the fire. There. That's better. Mary will be out to you in a minute. I see read the paper this morning that Consul is down half a percent. That's serious, mind you. And shows the whole country's in a state of chussels. What's Consul's, Jack? Consuls, oh, consuls is, oh, there's no use telling women what consuls is. They wouldn't understand. It's just as you were saying, Mr. Boyle. Oh, good evening, Mary. How pretty you're looking. Am I? Uh, we were just talking when you came in, Mary. I was telling Mr. Bentham that the whole country's in a state of chassis. Would you prefer the green or the blue ribbon round me hair, Charlie? <laughs> Mary. Your father speak. We're just telling Mr. Bentham that the whole country is in a state of chassis. I'm sure you're fretting, Dad, whether it is or no. Uh, With all our churches and religions, the world's not a bit the better. Tay! And Ireland's taken a leaf out of the world's book. When we got the making of our own laws, I thought we'd never <coughs> stop to look behind us. But instead of that, we never stopped to look before us. If the people had folly up their religion better... There'd be a better chance for us. What do you think, Mr. Bentham? I'm afraid I can't venture to express an opinion on that point, Mrs. Boyle. Dogma has no attraction for me. I forgot you didn't hold with us. What's this you said you were? A theosophist, Mrs. Boyle. And 
What in the name of God's a theosophist? Well, theosophists, you know, sir. Tell her, Mr. Bentham, tell her. It's hard to explain in a few words. Theosophy is founded on the Vedas, the religious books of the East. Its central theme is the existence of an all-pervading spirit, the life breath. Nothing really exists but this one universal life breath. And whatever seems to exist separately from this life breath doesn't really exist at all. It is all vital force in man, in all animals and in all vegetation. This life breath is called the prana. The prana? Oh, what a comical name. Prana, <laughs> yes, the prana. That's the prana. Wish, wish, Jack. The happiness of man depends upon his sympathy with the spirit. Men who have reached a high state of excellence are called yogi. Some men become yogi in a short time. It may take others millions of years. Yogi? I've seen hundreds of them in the streets of San Francisco. It is said <laughs> by these yogi that if we practice certain mental exercises, we would have powers denied to others. For instance, the faculty of seeing things that happen miles and miles away. Oh, I wouldn't care to meddle with that sort of belief. It's a very curious religion altogether. What's curious about it? Isn't all religions curious? If they weren't, you wouldn't get anyone to believe them. But religions is passing away. They've had their day like everything else. Take the real Dublin people, for instance. They know more about Charlie Chaplin and Tommy Mix than they do about Saints Peter and Paul. You don't believe in ghosts, Mr Bentham. Don't you know he doesn't, Mother? I don't know that, Mary. Scientists are beginning to think that what we call ghosts are sometimes seen by person of a certain nature. They say that sensational actions such as the killing of a person demand great energy. And that energy lingers in the place where the action occurred. People may live in that place and see nothing. When someone may come along whose personality has some peculiar connection with the energy of that place and in a flash... The person sees the whole affair. Uh, what sort of talk is this to be going on with? Is there nothing better to be talking about but the killing of people? My God, isn't it bad enough for these things to happen without talking about them? Oh, I'm very sorry, Mrs. Boyle. I never thought... Never mind, Mr. Bentham. He, he's very touchy. Oh, mother of God. What's that? Shut the door. Shut the door quick, for God's sake. Great God, have mercy on me. Blessed Mother of God, shelter me, shelter your son. What's wrong with you, Johnny? What age? Sit down. Sit down here. There now. There now. Johnny, Johnny, what ails you? I've seen him. I've seen him. Kneeling in front of the statue. Oh, merciful Jesus, have pity on me. Get him a glass of whiskey. Quick, man, oh, and yeah. don't stand gawking. Oh, sit oh, here, sit here, Mother. Between me and the door. I'll sit beside you as long as you like. Only tell me, what was it came across here at all? I seen him. I seen Robbie Tancred kneeling down before the statue. Oh, mother of God. Oh, yeah. And the red light shining on him. Oh. Uh, and when I went in, he turned and looked at me. Oh. And I seen the wounds bleeding in his breast. Oh, why did he look at me like that? It wasn't my fault that he was done in, mother of God. Keep him away from me. There, oh. there, child, you've imagined it all. There was nothing there at all. It was the red light you seen, and the talk we had put all the rest into your head. Here, drink more of this. That can do you good. That's it. Now, stretch yourself out there for a little. Go in, Jack. I told him it's only his own head it was. Uh, it's all nonsense. It was only a shadow he saw. Mother of God, he made me hurt left. It was simply due to an overwrought imagination. We all get that way at times. There, Johnny. Lie down there and I'll put a quilt across you. Now, that's it. You'll be as right as the mail in a few minutes. Mother, go into the room and see if the light's lighting before the statue. Jack. Run in and see if the light's lighten before the statue. Mary, slip in and see if the light's lighten before the statue. It's all right, Mary. I'll go. <clears throat> well? Everything just as it was. The light burning bravely before the statue. Of course, oh, I knew it was all nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello! <laughs> 
dead, Jack, sir. And Mrs. Madigan. Oh, come on, come on in, Mrs. Madigan. Come on. Holy, here you are, our tiger. I was afraid you weren't going. That's a fine big comb ornament in your hair and them huge beads. There's some people able to dress, eh, Jocks? Oh, fair as the blossoms that bloom in the May, and sweet as the scent of the new mown hay, and well may she wear them. <laughs> Mary, I know some are as sweet as the blossoms that bloom in the May. Oh, no names, no pack drill. And uh, now <laughs> I'll introduce the pair of to Mary's intended. <clears throat> oh. Mr. Bentham, <laughs> this is Mrs. Madigan, an old back parlour neighbour that, if she could help at all, I'd never see. See a body shot. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure it's a great pleasure to know you, Mrs. Madigan. And I'm going to tell you, Mr. Bentham, you're going to get as nice a bit of skirt in Mary there as ever you've seen in your puff. Oh, hey, <laughs> Not like some of the dressed up dolls that's knocking about looking for men when it's a oh, yeah. scalping they want. <laughs> I remember, as well as I remember her yesterday, oh, the day she was born, of a Tuesday, the 25th of June, in the year 1901, at 33 minutes past one, the Foley's clock, the pub at the corner of the street. A cold day it was, too, for the season of the year, and I remember saying to Jocks out there, who I met coming up the stairs, that the new arrival in Biles would grow up to be a hardy chislock if it lived, and that she'd be something one of the days that nobody suspected. And so, here she is today, going to be married to a young man looking as if he'd be fit to come and sur it in any position in life, what? if it had pleased God to call her. Uh, 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 sit down, Mrs. Madigan, sit <laughs> down, my old sport. And uh, this is Jocks O'Daly, past chief ranger of the dear little shamrock branch of the Irish National Foresters, an old upstairs front top neighbour that never despaired, even in the darkest days of Ireland's sorrow. Oh, Neil Desperandum, Captain Neil Desperandum. Oh, sit down, Jocks, oh, sit down. The two of us was often in a tight corner. Aye, and Foley snow. Yeah, we came over flying, we came over flying, Captain. Oh, uh, now for a drink. Oh, I, I and now I know you won't <laughs> refuse an elf, friend. Is Johnny not well, Mrs. Shh. Oh, that poor darling. Well, uh, Mrs. Madding, is, is it tea or what? Oh, well, speaking for myself, I just had me tea a minute ago, and I'm afraid to drink anymore. Yeah. I'm never the same when I drink too much tea. No. Thanks all the same, Mr. Byer. Well, what about a bottle of stout or a drop of whiskey? A bottle of stout would be a little too heavy for me stomach after me tea. <laughs> Try the ball of malt. <laughs> There's nothing like a ball of malt. Occasional, like, too much of it isn't good. No. Ah, oh, God, Johnny, don't put too much water on it. <laughs> there you go, Neil. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> I suppose you'll be leaving this place. I'm looking for a place near the sea. I'd like the place that you might say was me cradle to be me grave as well. The sea is always calling. Yeah, she is calling, calling, calling in the wind and on the sea. Uh, another drop of whiskey, Mrs. Madigan? Well, now, it'd be hard to refuse seeing the suspicious times that's in it. The song, <laughs> you Juno, Mary, home to our mountains. Here, here. Oh, and the darling song, the darling oh, song. I know, Dad. I'm not in the singing humour. I'll oh, go on. Go on with you, Mary, and you only going to be married. I remember as well as I remember yesterday. It was on a lovely August evening, exactly, according to date, 15 years ago, come the Tuesday following the next that's coming on, when me own man, the Lord be good to him, and me was sitting shy together in a doughty little nook on a country road, adjacent to the stiles. That'll scratch your lovely little white neck, is he? <laughs> Catching hold of a dangling bramble branch, holding clusters of the loveliest flowers you've ever seen, and breaking it off so that his arm fell, accidental-like, <laughs> round me waist. And I felt it tightening, 
And tightening, and tightening. Oh, I thought me bosom was every minute going to burst oh, out oh, into a rice and song yeah. about the little green leaves that were shaking on the trees. The gallivant and butterflies are buzzing at the breeze. Yeah, order for the song now, order. Do you know, uh, Mary, order. Come on, order. Come on, come on Mary. Come on, Mary. Sure, we do uh, our well, best. Well, 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 yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, the there, oh, right. Are we yeah. ready? Yeah. Right. Home to our mountains, let us return, love. There in the young days, peace had its reign. There shall thy sweet song fall on my slumbers. There shall thy lute Make me joyous again. Rest, O Mother, kneeling beside thee. I will pour forth my true bad or lay. Away, away, sorrows away. Away, away, sorrows away. Love me to rest. Love me to rest. Oh, you were the best. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Do you know I never seen you in better form? Very nicely <laughs> rendered indeed. A noble call, a noble call. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what about yourself, Mrs. Madigan? No, oh, you no. I would if I were a blackbird, I'd whistle. Now, Juno, though I remember a time when Maisie Madigan could sing like a nightingale at mating time. <laughs> I remember as well as I remember yesterday at a party given to celebrate the coming of the first chiseler to Annie and Benny Jimison, who was the barber, you may remember, in Henrietta Street, that after Easter week hung out a green, white, nodding pole, and then when the town started their jazz dancing, whipped it in again and stuck out a red, white and blue one instead, <laughs> giving us an excuse that a barber's poll was strictly non again. <laughs> Singing, and you'll remember me at the top of your voice with the notes quivering in a dead hush of petrified attention, followed by a clap and a hands that chucked the tumblers on the table and capped B. Jimison, the barber, saying that it was the best rendering of you remember me yeah. he ever heard in his yeah. natural yeah. yeah. and I prefer a jocks or song yeah. one there doctor no I don't ask me captain jocks or song jocks or song give us one you should I was oh no captain go on go on go on go on she is far from the land where our young hero sleeps and lovers around her are sighing. <laughs> and lovers around her are sighing. Sighing. And lovers, and around, lovers around, around her are sighing. What's uh, the use of trying to sing the song if you don't know? What's well, try the... another one, Mr. Daly. Uh, Maybe you'd be more fortunate. Go on, Jack. Sir, try another one. Uh, try another one. Uh, one more. Well, I think I'll try another one. I have heard the mouse singing. His love song to 
the morn. I have seen the dewdrops clinging to the rose just newly born. But that I'm mother, put on the gramophone for God's born. sake and stop doctors bawling. Gramophone! Thanks, Joseph. I hate to see fellows trying to do what they're not able to do. Uh, where's Jack? Don't put it on. Don't put it on yet. What? That must be poor Mrs. Tancred coming down to go to the hospital. Oh. I forgot all about them bringing the body to the church tonight. Open the door, Mary, and give them a bit of light there. It's a sad journey we're going on, but God's good, and the Republicans won't always be down. Uh, what good is that to me now? Whether they're up or down, it won't bring me darling boy back from the grave. Come in. Come in and have a hot cup of tea, Mrs. Tancred, before you go. Oh, I could take nothing now, Mrs. Boyle. I won't be long after him. Still and all, he died a noble death. He did. And we'll bury him like a king. <laughs> And I'll go on living like a pauper. Oh, what's the pains I suffered bringing him into the world to carry him to his cradle? To the pains I'm suffering now, carrying him out of the world to bring him to his grave. It would be better for you not to go at all, Mrs. Tancred, but to stay at home beside the fire with some of the neighbours. I seen the first of Mary, and I'll see the last of him. You'd want a shawl, Mrs. Tancred. It's a cold night and the wind's blowing sharp. I have a shawl above. Give me a minute, Mrs. Tancred. My home is gone now. He was my only child. And to think that he was lying for a whole night, stretched out on the side of a lonely country lane, with his head, his darling head that I often kissed and fondled. Half hidden in the water of a running brook. And I'm told he was the leader of the ambush when my next door neighbour, Mrs. Mannon, lost her free state soldier son. And now here's the two of us old women, standing one on each side of a scales of Sarah, balanced be the bodies of our two dead, darling sons. Oh, God bless you, Mrs. Madigan. Oh, Mother of God. Mother of God. Have pity on the pair of us. Oh, blessed virgin. Where were you when me darling son was riddled with bullets? When me darling son was riddled with bullets? Sacred heart of the crucified Jesus. Take away our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh. Take away this murder and hate and give us thine own eternal love. That was Mrs. Tancred from the floor above, Mr. Bentham. Her son was found there yesterday, lying out beyond Finglas, riddled with bullets. A die hard he was, by all accounts. Ah, he was a nice, quiet boy, but latterly, he went to hell with his republic forced and his republic last and republic overall. Oh, he often took tea with us here in the old days. And Johnny there and him used to be always together. Well, am I always to be having to tell you that he was no friend of mine? I never cared for him, and he could never stick me. It's not because he was commandant of the battalion that I was quartermaster of that we were friends. She's gone now, the Lord be good to him. God help his poor old crater of a mother, for no matter whose friend or enemy he was. He was her poor son. The whole thing is terrible, Mrs. Boyle, but the only way to deal with a mad dog is to destroy him. <clears throat> and uh, to think of me forgetting about you being brought to the church tonight and we singing and all. But it's as well we didn't have the gramophone going anyhow. Even if we had a self, we've nothing to do with these things one way or the other. That's the government's business and let them do what we're paying them for doing. I'd yeah. like to know how a body's not to mind these things. Look at the way they're after leaving the people in this very house. Hasn't the whole house nearly been massacred? 
there's young Doherty's husband with his leg off. Mrs Travers that had her son blew up be a mine in Inchigeel in County Cork. Mrs Mannon that lost one of her sons in an ambush a few weeks ago. And now, poor Mrs Tancred's only child gone west with his body made a colander off. Sure, if it's not our business, I don't know whose business it is. Yeah, there, that's enough about them things. They don't affect us and we needn't give a damn. If they want a wake, well, let them have a wake. When I was a sailor, I was always resigned to meeting a watery grave. And if they want to be soldiers, well, there's no use them squealing when they meet a soldier's face. Oh, no, no, sure is. Let me like a soldier fall and me breast expanding to the ball. And one way she deserves all she got. For lately, she let the diehards make an open house of the place and for the last couple of months, either when the sun was rising or when the sun was setting, you had the police bursting into your room asking you where you were born, where you were christened, where you were married and where you would be buried. Now, for God's sake, let us have no more of this talk. Mr. Byles' song before we start the gramophone. Come on, Charlie. (coughs) Mother, Charlie and I are going out for a little stroll. All right, darling. We won't be long away, Mrs. Boyle. Go on, Captain. Go on. on, (laughs) (laughs) I I want to have a few more jars in me before I'd be infected for singing. (laughs) Here, here. Give us that poem you wrote the other day. Oh, it's a darling poem. It's a darling poem. God oh, bless us. Is he starting to write poetry? <laughs> <laughs> Sean and I were friends, sir. To me, he was all in all. His walk was very heavy. And his wages were very small. None better on the beach is docker, I'll go bail. Tis now I'm feeling lonely, for today he lies in jail. Oh, I <laughs> he, was, he was not what some call pious, seldom at church or prayer. For the greatest scoundrels I know, sir, goes every Sunday there. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> Fond of his point, well, rather, but hated the boss by creed, but never refused the copper. To comfort a pal oh. in need. Oh, oh, yeah, that's yeah, not real. Right. 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 You, you should molly that up. You should molly that up. You should, you should. It's a talent, Paul. It's a talent, Paul. Are you going to put on the gramophone tonight, or are you not? Go on, Jack. Put on a record. Go on, Captain. Go on. Well, Go you on. Just want to keep a dead silence. Oh, no bother. No bother. <laughs> If you're Irish, come into the parlor. There's a welcome here for you. And if your name is Timothy or Pat, as long as you come from Ireland, there's a welcome on the mat. If you come, come into the parlor. Come on, our kids, thanks a We'll sing you a song, we'll make a fuss. Whoever you are, you're one of us. If you're Irish, this is a place for you. Stop! 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 Are you supposed to have that thing bawling in the funeral of Mrs. Tancred's son passing the house? Have none of you any respect for the Irish people's national regard for the dead? Maybe Needle Nugent. It's nearly time we had a little less respect for the dead mm. and a little more regard for the living. Here, here. You know. We don't want you, Mr. Nugent, to teach us what we learnt at our mother's knee. But you, you don't look yourself as if you are dying of the grief. Oh, if you ask Maisie Madigan anything, get her. Go on. Not the end of this. I call you a true die-hard and live soft Republican, attending Republican funerals in the day and stopping up half the night making suits for the civic guards. Yeah, I showed him, didn't I? Here's the hearse. Here's the hearse.
There's the old mother walking behind the coffin. You can hardly see the coffin with the wreaths. Oh, it's a darling funeral. What a darling funeral. Come on, we'd have a better view from the street. Oh, yes. All right, come on, we go. Master Boyle. The mobilizer. You're not at the funeral. Oh, not well. <laughs> I'm glad I found you. You were stopping at your aunt's. Called there, but you'd gone. I've to give you an order to attend a battalion staff meeting the night after tomorrow. Where? I don't know. You're to meet me at Nelson's Pillar at eight o'clock. Then we're to go to a place I'll be told of tonight. They will meet a motor that will bring us to the meeting. They think you might be able to know something about them that gave the nod where Commandant Tancred was sheltering. I'm not going, then. We know nothing about Tancred. <laughs> you better come for your own sake. Remember your oath. I won't go. Haven't I done enough for Ireland? I've lost me arm and me hips destroyed so that I'll never be able to walk right again. Good God, haven't I done enough for Ireland? Boy, no man can do enough for Ireland. Has Bentham never even written to you since, Mary? Not one line for the past month. Not even a line, Mother. Well, that's very curious. What came between the two of you at all? To leave you so sudden and you so great together. To go away to England and not even to leave you his address. The way he was always bringing you to dances, I thought he was mad after you. Are you sure you said nothing to him? No, Mother. At least nothing that could possibly explain has given me up. Now you know you're a bit hasty at times, Mary, and say things you shouldn't say. I never said to him what I shouldn't say. I'm sure of that. How are you sure of it? Because I love him. With all my heart and soul, Mother. Why? I don't know. I often thought to myself that he wasn't the man poor Jerry was. But I couldn't help loving him all the same. But you shouldn't be fretting the way you are. When a woman loses a man, she never knows what she's after losing, to be sure. But then, she never knows what she's after gaining either. Oh, you're not the one girl of a month ago. You look like one pining away. It's long ago I had a right to bring you to the doctor instead of waiting till tonight. There's no necessity, really, Mother, to go to the doctors. Nothing serious is wrong with me. I'm run down and disappointed, that's all. I'll not wait another minute. I don't like the look of you at all. I'm afraid we made a mistake in throwing over poor Jerry. He'd have been better for you than that Bentham. Mother, the best man for a woman is the one for whom she has the most love. And Charlie had it all. Well, there's one thing to be said for him. He couldn't have been thinking of the money or he wouldn't have left you. It must have been something else. I don't know. I don't know, Mother. Only I think... What do you think? I imagine he thought we weren't good enough for him. And what was he himself, only a school teacher? Though I don't blame him for fighting shy of people like that Joxer fella and that old Madigan one. Nice sort of people for your father to introduce to a man like Mr Bentham. Here, Mary, put on your coat. You might have told me about this before now, Mary. I don't know why you like to hide everything from your mother. I'd have known nothing about you and Bentham if it hadn't been for the will. And it was only today, after long coaxing, that you let out that he's left you. 
Ah, it would have been useless to tell you. You wouldn't understand. Maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't understand. Well, we'll be off now. I'm taking Mary to the doctor's. Are you going to get up this evening, Jackie Boyle? The pains in my legs is terrible. It's me should be popping off with the doctor instead of Mary the way I feel. Oh, sorry, Benja. A nice way you were in last night. Carried in in a frog's march, dead to the world. If that's the way you'll go on when you get the money, it'll be the grave for you, an asylum for me, and, and the poor house for Johnny. I thought you were going. That's what has you the way you are. You can't bear to be spoken to. Knowing the way we are, up to our ears in debt, it's a wonder you wouldn't have got up to go to the solicitors and see if we could have gotten a little of the money even. I can't be going up there night, noon and morning, can I? He can't give me the money till he gets it, can he? I can't get blood out of a tornado, can I? It's nearly two months since we heard of the will, and the money seems as far off as ever. I suppose you know we owe twenty pounds to El Murphy. I have a faint recollection of you telling me that before. Well, you'll go over to the shop yourself for the things in future. I'll face them no more. I thought you said you were going. I'm going now. Come on, Mary. Hey, uh, Juno. Hey. Well, what do you want now? Is there air a bottle of stout left? Two of them here still. Uh, show us him one of them and leave the other there till they get up. Uh, uh, throw us in the paper that's on the table. What paper is it you want? The messenger? Messenger, the news of the world. Uh, and the bottle of Sloan's liniment that's in the drawer. Mind the candle now and don't burn the house over our heads. Mad. I left the other bottle of stout on the table. I smoke as I dried me mouth. Hi there, Maria Royce. Oh, be God, they must be all out. I was thinking there was something up when he didn't answer the signal. We seen Juno and Mary gone, but I didn't see him. And it's very sad that he escapes me, Mr. Nugent. Uh, he's not going to escape me, Doctor. He's not going to be let go to the fair altogether. I'm sure the house couldn't hold him lately. And he's going around like a masterpiece of the free state country, <laughs> forgetting their friends, forgetting God. He wouldn't even lift his hat past in the chapel. Oh, so they were bound to get a drop. And you, you really think there's no money coming to him after all? Not as much as a red rex, man. I've been a bit anxious this long time over me money, and I went up to the solicitors to find out all I could. Ah, man, they were going to throw me down the stairs. They told me that the old cock himself has the stairs worn away coming up after the money, and they black in the face telling them he's going to get nothing. Some way or another that the will is rich, he won't be entitled to get as much as a make. Ah, Mr. Nugent, I thought there was something curious about huh? the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I've been having strange dreams for the last couple of weeks. Huh? And I noticed that that Benton fella doesn't be coming here now, huh? Oh. There must be something on the mat there, too. Oh. Anyway, who in the name of God would leave that to that old bummer? <laughs> Should it be unmatched? And the way Juno and him's been throwing their weight about for the past couple of months. Uh, <laughs> him that goes a-borrowing uh, goes a-sorrowing. Well, he's not going to throw his weight about in the suit I made for him much longer. I'm telling you, Jocks, that seven pounds aren't to be found growing in the bushes these days. And, 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 and there isn't hardly a neighbour in the whole street that hasn't lent him money on the strength uh, of what he was going to get. But they're at the back of the wrong horse. <laughs> Wasn't it the mercy of God that I'd nothing to give him? Oh. The softy I am, you know. I'd have lent him my last juice. Oh. I must have had some of these good prayers. Yeah. After all, an honest man is the noblest work of God. Very true, Jack. Oh, wish, damn it. He must be inside in the bed. Inside or outside of it. He's going to pay me for that suit. I'll give it back. Oh, he'll not climb up my back as easily as he thinks. Yes, go on in at once, man, and get it off him. Hello? Oh! Uh, oh, uh, um... Uh, ah, 
don't disturb yourself, Mr. Vile. I hope you're not sick. Ah, uh, the old legs, Mr. Newton, the old legs. I just called over to see if you could let me have anything off the suit. Uh, how much is this it is? It's the same as it was at the start. Seven pounds. I'm well, glad you came, Mr. Nugent. I want a good heavy top coat. Irish breeze. If you have it, uh, how much mm -hmm. would a top coat like that be? About now? six pounds now. Six pounds, mm -hmm. six and seven, thirteen. That'll be thirteen pounds, I know. Yeah, what are you doing? You'll hold me no fucking pounds. Stop. Maybe you think you're better able to owe us than to pay us. Here, come back to hello with that. Where are you going with them clothes of mine? Where am I going with them clothes of yours? <laughs> well, I like your damn cheek. Here, what am I going to dress myself in when well, I'm going I out? I don't care what you're going to dress yourself in. Uh, you can put yourself in a... A bullsack cover for all I like. <laughs> Come on, Jock <laughs> Bottle of stout, that's for me. <laughs> Mr. Newton! Got a shoe on. Hey! Mr. Newton! Mr. Newton! Hey! Needle! Newton! Come back, you blackguard! Hey, what's up? What's wrong, Captain? Ah, you just been here and took away me suits. The only things I had to go out in. Took your suits? Oh. For God's sake, what were you doing while he was taking them? I was in bed when he stole in like a thief in the night. And before I knew what he was thinking of, he whipped them from the wardrobe and was off like a red shank. What in the name of God did he do a thing like that for? What did he do it for? How the hell do I know oh, what he done it for? Jealousy and spite, I suppose. Did he not say what he done it for? Aren't I am to telling you that he had them whipped up and was gone before I could open me mouth. Oh, that was a very sudden thing to do. There must be something behind it. Did he hear that, I wonder? Did he hear that? You talk very queer, Juxer. What could he hear? About you not getting the money in some way, I thought I... Prevent me from getting the money. That's just what I was thinking. I want to prevent you from getting the money. Nothing as far as I can see. Oh, holy God. What's up, Jack? He must have after lifted the bottle of stilt that Juno left on the table. Ah, oh, no, he wouldn't be after doing a thing like that now. And, and who done it then? Juno left the bottle of stilt here and it's gone. It didn't walk, did it? Oh, that's shocking. That's shocking. <sighs> oh, man's inhumanity to man makes countless thousands more. I hope I'm not disturbing you in any discussion on your forthcoming legacy, if I may use the word, and that you let me have a barney for a minute or two with you, Mr. Bile. Oh, to be sure, Mrs. Madigan and old friends always welcome. Yeah, come in the evening, come in the morning, come when you're asked to come in the morning, Mrs. Uh, Madigan. Uh, sit down, <laughs> Mrs. Madigan, sit down. And the few words I have to say can be said standing. Uh -uh. Uh, putting aside all formularies, I suppose you remember me lending you some time ago three pounds that I raised on blankets and furniture in me uncle's. I remember it well. I have it recorded in me things to remember, Bill. Uh, three pounds, five shillings from Maisie Madigan. Raised on articles pawned and item fourpence given to make up the price of a point on the principle that no board ever flew on one wing, all to be repaid at par when the ship comes home. Well, ever since I shoved in the blankets, I've been perishing with the cold, and I've decided if it'll be too hot in the next world itself, I'm not going to be too cold in this one, and consequently... I won't be three pound, if you please. Well, this is a very sudden demand, Mrs. Madigan, and can't be met. But I'm willing to give you a receipt in full. In full! Come on! Out with the money and don't be jack acting. Oh, you can't get blood out of a turnip, can you? Give me me money, hey. you old oh. reprobate, oh. or I'll shake oh. the word of it out of you. Hey, hold on there. Hold on there. You'll wait for your money now, me lassie. I'll wait for it, will I? Will I not wait long? If I can't get the cash... Get the wart of it. Hey, hey, hey there. Where are you going with the gramophone? I'm going to the pond to get me three quid, five shillings. I'll bring you the ticket, and then you can do what you like, me bucko. Hey, 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 you can't, you can't, hey, 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 Maisie, you can't touch that. You can't touch that. It's not my property, and it's not pet for yes. So much the better. It'll be 
be an ease to me conscience, for I'm taking what doesn't belong to you. You're not going to be swanking it like a peacock with Maisie Madigan's money. I'll pull some of the gorgeous feathers out of your tail. Oh. 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 What's the word coming to it all? I ask you, jocks are daily. Is there any morality left anywhere? I wouldn't have believed that only I seen it with my own two eyes. I didn't think Maisie Madigan was that sort of woman. I see she's either a sub taking Jack or I she's heard something. Heard something? Bill, what? It was not any harm to ask you. She, she must have heard some rumour or told her that you weren't going to get the money. Who says I'm not going to get the money? Sure, I don't know. I was only saying. You're only saying what? Nothing. You were going to say something. Don't be a twister. Who's a twister? Why don't you speak your mind, well, then? You never twisted yourself, I know. You wouldn't have held. Did you ever know me to twist? Did you ever know me to twist? Did you ever do anything else? You can't believe a word that comes out of your mouth. Here. Yeah. Get up here with this. Get out. I always knew you were a procrastinator and a procrastinator. All the anchors wait. Uh, Farewell, remember me. Uh, uh, Jackie Boyle, Esquire, Infernal Rogue, and damn liar. I'll have you, Dr. Daly. I'll have you for dinner, tea, and lunch. (sighs) Oh, here we go. Doctor, and you at it again? When are you going to have a little respect for yourself? And I'll be always making a show with all. Are you going to lecture me now? Is mother back yet? Well, here she is. Well, what did the doctor say about Mary? Come over here, Jack. I have something to say to you. About Mary. About Mary? Sit down here. More trouble in our native land, is it? Well, what is it? It's about Mary. What about Mary? There's nothing wrong with her, is there? I'm sorry to say, there's a great deal wrong with her. A great deal wrong with her. First Johnny and now Mary. Is the whole house going to become a hospital? It's not consumption, is it? No, it's not consumption. It's worse. Worse? Well, we'll have to get her into some place out of this. There's no one here to mind her. We'll all have to mind her now. You might as well know now, Johnny, is another time. Jack, do you know what the doctor said to me about her? How would I know? I wasn't there, was I? He told me to get her married at once. Married at once? And why did he say the like of that? Because Mary's going to have a baby in what? a short time. Going to have a baby? My God, what'll Bentham say when he hears that? Are you blind, man? That you can't see that it was Bentham that has done this wrong to her. Then he'll marry her. He'll have to marry her. You know he's gone to England. God knows where he is now. Well, I'll follow him. I'll follow him and bring him back and make him do her justice. The scoundrel. I might have known what he was with his yogis and his prawn. We'll have to keep it quiet till we see what we can do. Oh, is this a nice thing to come in on top of me? And the state I'm in, a pretty show I'll be the joxer and that old one Madigan. <laughs> and I have to go through enough without having to go through this. What you and I'll have to go through will be nothing to what poor Mary will have to go through. For you and me is middle and old, and most of our years is spent. But Mary will have maybe 40 years to face and handle, and every one of them will be tainted with a bitter memory. Where is she? Where is she till I tell her off? Well, I'm telling you, when I'm done with her, she'll be a sorry girl. I left her in me sister's till I came to speak to you. You'll say nothing to her, Jack. Ever since she left school, she's earned her living. And your fatherly care never troubled the poor girl. Oh, go on, take her part again, her father. But I'll let you see whether I'm saying nothing to her or no. Her and her reading. That's more of the blasted nonsense that has the hills falling down on top of us. What did the likes of her, born in a tenement house, want with reading? Her readings after bringing her to a nice pass. Oh, it's maddening, maddening, maddening. When she comes back here. 
Say nothing to her, Jack. Or she'll leave this place. Leave this place? Aye, she'll leave this place and quick too. If Mary goes, I'll go with her. Well, go with her. Go, the pair of yous. I live before I seen yous and I can live when yous are gone. Isn't this a nice thing? To come rolling in on top of me after all your praying to St. Anthony and the little flower. And she's the child of Mary too. I wonder what the nuns will think of her now. And it'll be bellows to it all over the district before you can say Jack Robinson. And whenever I'm seen, they'll whisper, That's the father of Mary Boyle that had the kid be the swank she used to go with. Do you know? Do you know? To be sure they'll know more about it than I will myself. She shall be driven out of the house she's brought disgrace on. Hush you, Johnny. We needn't let it be bellows all over. All we've got to do is to leave this place quietly and go somewhere where we're not known and nobody will be the wiser. You're talking like a two-year-old woman. Where we get a place over this? Places aren't that easily got. But, Jack, when we get the money... Money? What money? Why, old Ellison's money, of course. There's no money coming from old Ellison. Or anyone else... Since you heard of one trouble, you might as well hear of another. There's no money coming to us at all. The will's a washout. Oh, holy God. What are you saying, man? No money? How could it be a washout? The boy that's after doing it to Mary, done it to me as well. The tick made out the will wrong. Oh, he said in the will only first cousin and second cousin instead of mentioning names. And now anyone that thinks he's a first cousin or second cousin to the old Ellison can claim the money as well as me. And they're springing up in hundreds and coming from America and Australia thinking to get their whack out of it. While all the time, the solicitors is gobbling it up. Till there's not so much as it buy a stocking for your lovely daughter's baby. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Why did you say nothing about this before? You're not serious, Jack. I'm telling you. You're not serious. The scholar Bentham made a banjax of the will. Instead of saying the rest of me property to be divided between me first cousin, Jack, Boyle oh. and my second cousin Mick Finnegan Asantri, he writ down only me first and second cousins of the world and his wife are after the property now. Now I know why Bentham left poor Mary in the lurch. I can see it all now. Oh, was there not even a, a middling honest man left in the world? And you let us run into debt. And you borrowed money from everybody to fill yourself with beer. And now, you tell us the whole thing's a washout. Oh, if it's true, I'm done with you. For you're worse than me, Sister Mary. You hold your tongue, you hear? I'll not take any lip from you. Go and get Bentham if you want satisfaction for all that's after happening to us. No, I won't hold me tongue. I won't hold me tongue. I'll tell you what I think here. Father and all as you are. Johnny, you waste it. Johnny, Johnny, for God's sake, be quiet. No, I won't be quiet. I'll not be quiet. Oh, he's a nice father, isn't he? Is there any wonder Mary went to strike when we have a Johnny father like me. this? My sake, be quiet. For your mother's sake. I'm going out now to have a few drinks with the last few mates I have. And tell that lassie of yours not to be here when I come back. For if I lay me eyes on her, I lay me hands on her. And if I lay me hands on her, I won't be accountable for me actions. Take care somebody doesn't lay his hands on you, you old... Johnny. Johnny. Oh, a nice son and a nicer daughter I have. Jack, sir! Jack, sir! Are you there? I'm here, are you, Lordy? I'm going down to Foley's. Are you coming? Come with you. With that sweet call, me heart is stored. I'm only waiting for the ward, and I'll be with you like a board. Oh, come on, come on. I have a nice sister and a nice father. There's no betting on it. I wish to God a bullet or a bomb had whipped me out of this long ago. Not one of yous, not one of yous have any thought for me. If you don't wish, John, you'll drive me mad. Who has kept the home together for the past few years? Only me. And who'll have to bear the biggest part of this trouble but me? 
got whining and whinging isn't going to do any good. You're to blame yourself for a great lovey. Giving him his own way in everything and never asking to check him, no matter what he done. Why didn't you look after the money? Why didn't you? We've been sent up by the manager of the Hibernian Furnishing Company, Mrs Boyle, to take back the furniture that was got a while ago. You shall touch nothing here. How do I know who you are? There's the order, ma'am. A chest of drawers, a table, one easy and two ordinary chairs, one mirror, one chest of filled divan and a wardrobe and two vases. Uh, come on, Bill, it's after knocking off time already. Take the far end. Ow. For God's sake, Mother, run down to Foley's and bring Father back, or we'll be left without a stick. What good would it be? You heard what he said before he went out. Well, can't you try? He ought to be here, and the like of this going on. What's up, Mother? I met men carrying away the table. And everyone's talking about us not getting the money after all. Everything's gone wrong, Mary. Everything. We're not getting a penny out of the will. Not a penny. What? I'll tell you all when I come back. I'm, I'm going for your father. It's a wonder you're not ashamed to show your face here. After what has happened. Mary. <laughs> and now it's that Jerry Devoyne. Mary, I want to speak to you for a few moments, may I? Your mother has told me everything, Mary, and I have come to you. I have come to tell you, Mary, that my love for you is greater and deeper than ever. Oh, Jerry. Jerry, say no more. All that is over now. Anything like that is impossible now. Impossible? Why do you talk like that, Mary? After all this has happened. What does it matter? What has happened? We are young enough to be able to forget all those things. Mary, Mary, I am pleading for your love. With labour, Mary, humanity is above everything. We are the leaders in a fight for a new life. I want to forget, Bentham. I want to forget that you left me, even for a while. Oh, Jerry. Jerry, you haven't a bitter word of scorn for me after all. Scorn? I love you. Love you, Mary. Even though? Even though you threw me over for another man. Even though you gave me many a bitter word. Yes. Yes, I know. But you love me even though... Even though I'm... I'm going... What? What? Ah. Uh, I was thinking so. You don't know everything. Surely to God, Mary, you don't mean that... That now you know all, Jerry. Now you know all. My God, Mary, have you fallen as low as that? Yes, Jerry, as you say, I have fallen as low as that. I didn't mean it in that way, Mary. It came on me so sudden that I didn't mind what I was saying. I never expected this. Your mother never told me. I'm sorry. God knows I'm sorry for you, Mary. Let us say no more, Jerry. I don't blame you for thinking it's terrible. I suppose it is. Everybody will think the same. It's only as I expected. Your humanity is just as narrow as the humanity of the others. I'm sorry all the same. I shouldn't have troubled you. I wouldn't if I'd known. If I can do anything for you, Mary, I will. Do you remember, Jerry, the verses you read when you gave the lecture in the socialist room some time ago on humanity's strife with nature? The verses? No, I don't remember. I do. They're running in me head. And we felt the power that fashioned all the lovely things we saw, that created all the murmur of an everlasting law was a hand of force and beauty with an eagle's tearing claw. Then we saw our globe of beauty was an ugly thing as well, a hymn divine whose chorus was an agonising yell, like the story of a demon that an angel had to tell. 
like a glowing picture by a hand unsteady, brought to ruin, like her craters, if their deadness could give life unto the moon, like the agonizing horror of a violin out of tune. Is he gone? Yes. We can't wait any longer for the old fella. Sorry, miss, but we have to live as well as the next man. Uh, grab the side table, Bob. Oh, uh, isn't this terrible? I suppose you told him everything. Couldn't you have waited for a few days? He'd have stopped the taking of the things if you'd kept your mouth shut. Are you burning to tell everyone of the shame you've brought on oh, us? This is unbearable. We'll take the chest of drawers next. It's the heaviest. Mother of God, the volume of lights have to go now. You put the wind to be the way you bore that time. The oil's all gone, that's all. Mother of God, there's a son I'm after getting. What's wrong with you, man? Is it a fit you're taking? I'm after feeling a pain in me breast. Like the tearing boy of a bullet. He's going, man. It's a wonder to leave a chap like that here by himself. <laughs> Don't let you use, no. Who are you? What are you doing here? Quick! You're moving forward to the stop pay for Get out of the other end of the room and turn your faces to the wall. Quick! Right, John Boyle, you are wanted. Some of us have a war to say to no, you. No, no, I'm sick, I can't. What do you want with me? Come on! Come on, we've a distance to go and have much time. Come on! Well, I'm an old comrade. Youth wouldn't suit an old comrade. Poor Tancred was an old comrade of yours. But you didn't think of that when you gave him away to that gang that sent him to his grave, no. huh? But we've no time to waste. No, no. Come on! Here, Dermot, catch him by the arm. No, no, please! Have you your beards? Me rosary beards? Huh? Why do you ask me that? Why do you ask me that? Go on, go on, merch! Are you just going to do in an old comrade? Look at me arm. I lost it for Ireland. Commandant Tancred lost his life for Ireland. Oh, sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on me. Mother of God, pray for here. me. Are you here. with me now in the agonies of death? Come on, you hold him. Come on, you hold him. You have to do I'll not wait much longer. What did they bring him away in the motor for? Nugent says he thinks they had guns. His me trouble's never going to be over, Mary. If anything had happened to poor Johnny, I think I'd lose me mind. I'll go to the police station. Surely they ought to be able to do something. Wait. What's that? Oh, maybe it's your father, though... When I left him in Foley's, he was hardly able to lift his head. Whisht! Mrs. Boyle, Mrs. Boyle. Mrs. Madigan. Oh, Mrs. Boyle, God and his blessed mother be with you this night. What is it, Mrs. Madigan? It's Johnny. Something about Johnny. God send it's not. God send it's not, Johnny. Don't keep me waiting, Mrs. Madigan. I've gone through so much lately that I feel able for anything. Two police men below wanting you. Wanting me? Why do they want me? Some poor fellow's been found and they think it's... Uh, it's... Uh... Johnny. Johnny. Oh, mother. Mother. <laughs> Me poor darling mother. Hush, hush, darling. You'll shortly have your own trouble to bear. And why do the police think it's Johnny, Mrs. Madigan? Because one of the doctors knew him when he was attending with his arm. Oh, it's true then. It's Johnny. It's my son. My own son. Oh, it's true. It's true what Jerry Devoyne says. There isn't a God. There isn't a God. If there was, he wouldn't let these things happen. Mary, you mustn't say them things. We'll want all the help we can get from God and his blessed mother now. These things have nothing to do with the will of God. Now, oh, what can God do again the stupidity of men? The police want you to go with them to the hospital to see the poor body. They're waiting below. We'll go. Come, Mary. And we'll never come back here again. Let your father forage for himself now. 
I've done all I could and it was all no use. He'll be hopeless till the end of his days. I've got a little room in my sister's where we'll stop till all your troubles is over. And then we'll work together for the sake of the baby. My poor little child, it'll have no father. It'll have what's far better. It'll have two mothers. Are you going to keep us waiting for you all night? Take your hour there. Take your hour. If you are in such a hurry, skip off then. For nobody wants you here. If they did, you wouldn't be found. For you're the same as you were under the British government. Never where you are wanted. As far as I can see, the polis as polis in this city is null and void. We'll go, Mary. We'll go. You to see your poor dead brother. And me to see me poor dead son. I dread it, mother. I dread it. I forgot, Mary. I forgot you. Poor old selfish mother was only thinking of herself. No, no, you mustn't come. It wouldn't be good for you. You go on to me sisters and I'll face the ordeal myself. Maybe I didn't feel sorry enough for Mrs. Tancred when her poor son was found as Johnny's been found now. Because he was a die hard. Ah, oh, why didn't I remember that then he wasn't a die hard or a stater? but only a poor, dead son. That's well I remember all that she said. And it's my turn to say it now. What was the pain we suffered, Johnny? Bringing you into the world to carry you to your cradle. To the pains I'll suffer carrying you out of the world to bring you to your grave. Mother of God. Mother of God, have pity on us all. Blessed Virgin, where were you when me darling son was riddled with bullets? When me darling son was riddled with bullets? Sacred heart of Jesus, take away our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh. Take away this murder and hate and give us thine own eternal love. Tanner left out of all I buried. The last of the Mohicans. The blinds is down, Jocks. Huh? The blinds is down. Cause all your troubles in your own kit bag and smile, smile, smile. The clothes will have to steady itself. It's going to hell. Where, where are all the shares gone to? No matter what one may say, Ireland sober is Ireland free. Chains and slavery. That's, that's a darling motto. A darling motto. <laughs> if the worst comes to the worst, I can join a flying column. I done me bit in Easter week. I had no business to be there. But Captain Biles. Captain Biles. Devil breeze, there a man with soul so dead. 
This is my own my native land. Commandant Kelly died in them arms, Doctor. Tell me one dear buddies that I died for Ireland. Does he ever read Willie Riley and his own Colleen Bonner? Is it an Ireland story? It's an Ireland story. I'm telling you, Doctor, the whole world's in a terrible state of justice. 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 In Juno and the Paycock by Sean O'Casey, Juno Boyle was played by Sorica Cusack, Captain Boyle by Stanley Townsend, Joxa Daly by John Kavner, Mary Boyle by Beth Cook, and Johnny Boyle by Rory Fleckburn. Charles Bentham and Jerry Devine were played by Rory Conahan, Mrs. Madigan by Michelle Moran, Mrs. Tancred by Marcella Reardon, Nugent and First Irregular by Stephen Hogan and Second Irregular by Craig Els. Other parts were played by David Kahn and Scarlett Brooks. The play was adapted and directed by Peter Kavanagh. 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 Kavanagh.